Can you hear them? Harry asked. Hear what? Ron asked in puzzlement. Them! The secret society above my bed! Can't you hear them plotting against me? Harry asked in panic. Harry, mate! Do I need to get Hermione? Ron asked nervously. No, replied Harry. I just want these people to stop having secret meetings above my bed. They never stop. They are always threatening me. Ron was now seriously alarmed. He was wondering if the mushrooms they had found to eat in the tent were responsible for Harry's strange behaviour. Hermione, quick! Ron shouted. Harry is seriously acting weird right now. After some time, Ron called Hermione again. Hermione, I could really use your help right about now. Now, seriously pissed off, Ron stormed into the kitchen, but there was no sign of Hermione. Hermione, where are you? Ron asked. From the bedroom, it sounded as though Harry was having a serious verbal battle with his invisible tormentors. What do you want from me? Why are you above my bed talking of your secret plots? Fuck off! Oh, fuck! Ron said. I have got to find Hermione. Ron! Harry screamed from the bedroom. The Dursleys are here! Uncle Vernon is singing Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, and Petunia and Dudley are singing Edelweiss from the Sound of Music. Make it stop! Harry screamed. Hang on, Harry! Ron shouted. I'm getting help! From outside the tent, Ron heard Hermione's voice and quickly ran towards the sound, but stopped dead halfway, his mouth hanging open. Hermione was sitting cross-legged on the ground, completely naked, and looking up into the sky. "'Oh, Sun Mother, I am at one with the universe and all beings. Bring forth the message, and I shall be your faithful messenger.' "'Oh, God!' Ron thought. "'It must be these fucking mushrooms.' "'Thank God I resisted eating the fucking things.' "'Uh, Hermione?' Ron asked hesitantly. "'Um, are you, uh, okay?' It took a long time for Hermione to face him, and even longer for her to process the question. "'Oh, Ron, I'm perfectly fine. All the world is open to me. So many beautiful things.' "'Um, OK, that's great, but I think we should go back into the tent. What do you think about that?' Ron asked. "'The tent is a closed universe, Ron. It doesn't allow us to love,' Hermione said with feeling. "'OK, maybe you could ask the Sun Mother to come in with you.' "'I couldn't do that!' Hermione said. Her fires of love cannot burn inside such a contraption. Let's forget about the tent, Ron. Join me in my quest as we make love with the earth and each other. Oh, fuck, Ron thought. This is not how I envisioned this moment. From inside the tent, Harry could be heard screaming at the Dursleys to stop playing the bagpipes in his left ear and shouting for the two monkeys sitting on his headboard to stop rehearsing Hamlet at once and leave him alone. Ron remembered that Charlie had once told him a story about something called magic mushrooms that he and his friends had found growing near the greenhouses. You just have to let things take their course. Charlie had told Ron, laughing at some of the antics that he and Tonks had got up to on these things. Yet again, Ron was so thankful that he had not ingested these. He had always hated mushrooms. How many times had Molly shouted at him for not eating them? Of course, Ron thought, the idea of Molly giving the family magic mushrooms was completely absurd. I think I'm just going to leave them to it. Look, if things get really bad, I can always get Bill. He knew one thing for certain. He did not want to make love to Hermione in this state. She is completely fucking mental. No, I'm quite happy to wait for this to end. Gently taking Hermione's arm, he took her back into the tent where Harry was muttering about the bagpipes in a sleepy kind of way. Ron fell into his bed, praying for the dawn and blessed normality. 